Okay, so I read your intake paperwork and I see that you were in a car accident about five months ago and you spent about four months in the hospital recovering from your injuries. Um, and I know you're still in recovery, but I did see that you had some negative feelings that have come from being at home and not being, you know, being at work. You had some strain in your marriage due to this. Um, and there's also been a little bit of strain within your family in regards to your mom, your dad, and your siblings. Can you kind of share with me, you know, what, what happened with the accident and, um, kind of just share about the relational dynamics and how it's been impacted? Yeah. Um, I got actually in an accident, um, when I, I was driving home from work and, I was going, like the light turned green and so I, you know, began to proceed through the intersection and all of a sudden, wham, from my left side, this car must have like, thought they were gonna be able to make it through the red light and it and hit me. And it happened so quickly and like, all I remember is like, severe pain in my hip and my leg and my shoulder area, the whole left side. And then, um, it was kinda like blank blacked out there for a moment and then someone like who witnessed the the accident must have called 911 and it was probably only like maybe a couple minutes from there um you know I heard the sirens and the fire truck firefighters trying to get me out and stuff and I think they ended up pulling me out carefully from the other side um of the, of the car um and yeah it was very painful they you know put me on the stretcher and, and I got myself a free ride in ambulance so yeah that wasn't good so it was pretty painful yeah okay can you share a little bit how this has um, impacted your marriage and your home life I do know that there's been some drinking at home yeah. as you stated well you know, it's very difficult when you have a, a lifestyle that you're used to, you know. Um, you know, things were really good. You know, I'd, you know, I'd again, you know, wake up in the morning, have a wonderful wife, she'd have breakfast ready for me, and then, you know, we'd talk a bit, and then as I was, walk, you know, heading out the door, she'd have my lunch for me, ready to go. And then, um, you know, and then the guys, and be able to go to work, you know, I. I love working, you know, I I didn't go to college, I went straight through high school um, to construction when I was, you know, 18, 19 years old, and then I ended up changing, you know, the company, uh, working for a different company, um, and now it's been, I've been with the same company for over 10 years, and so a lot of the guys, you know, they look at me as, as you know, like one of the guys I look up to, I'm one of the longer guys there, and uh, just to be able to joke around, you know, with the guys and, you know, having that leadership role, you know, as a foreman in a construction company and now, you know, having that taken away from me. Plus, I like the physical work, you know, even though, yes, I may be a foreman, but I actually get down there, I start, I do a lot of the work with the guys. I'm not one of those foreman that just sits back and does nothing. I, I don't like sitting behind a desk or anything like that and just doing nothing. That's not my ideal of, of being a hard worker. And so... Um, you know, and then obviously after throughout, you know, work day, I go home, come home, relax a little bit. My beautiful wife have dinner for me and we'll spend, you know, time with the kids and, and then they'll go to bed and then my wife and I have our alone time with each other and it was a very happy life, you know, and so now, you know, I'm stuck at home and just, uh, just not happy, you know, it's depressing and I'm frustrated and, you know, angry at the situation. So what it sounds like is you're missing the camaraderie of being on the job. It's not just the friendships that have been built and the joking around, but it was like having another family on the outside where you go, you see them for eight, nine hours maybe, depending. And then afterwards you go home to your family and you're spending family time with your wife and your kids. Um, so it's very understandable. Yeah. Are you able to share how this has impacted your relationship with your 
with your mom and your dad and your siblings as they've all been in the same line of work. So how has that been impacted? Yeah. Well, also, just more on my wife, you know, like, I know it's put a strain on her and me because I'm I'm at home now all the time. And, you know, of course, we love one another, but we're not used to spending that much time with each other. And so, um, you know, it's, it's, it gets very uh, frustrating, and I know that I'm not in the best of moods. And so I know that she gets, you know, a little burnt out with my attitude and, you know, um, and so I know that that's really put a strain and maybe at times I'm frustrated and so I'm short with her, I'm not as happy, you know, and, you know, I'm more of a, a positive person, but this has really put a lot of uh, negative things and negative attitude that I have and, um, and I don't want to take it out on my wife, you know, but I know that like verbally, like at times I'm short with her and, and um, I know that she can sense that and I know it's, you know, made her feel hurt at times and then regarding my family yeah like you know well we would usually go and spend family time with each other at least maybe once every you know month and a half two months we'd get over go over there to my parents and we'd get the grill going and you know the kids would go over there and the kids would be swimming and we just have a good time my family and I love to have a good time with each other and yeah construction runs in the family like my my my, my dad taught us my papa always said you know you work hard a man works hard you know the man's supposed to always provide you know, and and um, we were taught that, you know, the, the woman's the, the queen of the house. She takes care of the house, you know, and um, and so it's hard because now, you know, I'm in this physical pain. I walk with a limp and, you know, everybody looks at me, you know, and I don't think they look differently at me, but I feel different. And so, um, so I feel embarrassed, you know, I feel inadequate as a man. And yeah, I know the disability helps. But things have been a little more tighter financially. I'm not making as much money right now since I'm in disability. And, um, and so I like to have that extra money, you know, and I have to worry about that for my family. And so it's very um, discouraging, you know, to experience this. And, and also, um, you know, see, I'm not trying to be jealous, but to the, the see, you know, even my dad, you know, he's going to be retiring soon, but he's still you know, doing construction, doing well for his family and my brothers, you know, you know, I have my younger brothers that look to me and I still know they look up to me, but it's still discouraging because I don't feel like I'm the same person to be able to, you know, provide for my family. So, so what it sounds like is the cultural norms within your heritage play a major factor in how you're feeling after this accident because you're taught that the man you know, is the provider. And the woman, she takes care of the home and makes sure everything is orderly within the home. Mm -hmm. um, so if there was a way to kind of circumvent that temporarily, mm -hmm. do you think that that would be something you would be able to do in addition to either slowing down your drinking or stopping completely? Well, you know, drinking has really never been a problem for me, um, but I will admit that I've been drinking more, you know, since I've been at home. Um, you know, it's it's kind of depressing. There's really nothing to do, and I am, you know, drinking more. And um, I don't believe I'm an alcoholic. I don't I don't want to turn into an alcoholic, um, but um, I believe that. You know, maybe, maybe there can be some options. Um, I don't know. Like, I don't, I don't know. Alcoholic anonymous. I'm not alcoholic. I don't believe so. But like, you know, maybe, you know, to be able to. I, I guess what it is is sitting at home all day, having nothing to do with my time, and that's what's really doing it. I'm used to working and doing things, and so sitting at home is very depressing and um, boring. And so I, I. I believe that's why, you know, I'm drinking a lot more. So, you know, but I'm open to any ideas um, that will would be helpful, you know, because I, I don't want to, you know, be an alcoholic. So. Okay. Well, the next time we come together, which will be next week, we will look at some various options that are available to you um, to try and 
work through the emotions that you've been feeling and to just to get you back out there and getting you back into what you were used to doing. Yeah, that would be nice, you know, because um, I know that this is why, like, when my wife mentioned to me, you know, maybe I should talk to a counselor or something. At first, I didn't want to because I, you know, I feel like I'm okay, but, you know, I can see that it is putting a strain on our relationship and, you know, and my family, but she's, my wife is a good woman, and I know that she's seen the impact it's having on me, and she knows I'm more of a positive person, you know, and I'm usually happy, and she sees that I've been down, and, you know, I have been negative, and even been a little bit, like, even short with the kids, too, you know, and I don't want to be like that with my kids, so, yeah, so I'm looking forward to, you know, getting some ideas and moving forward. Okay, well, we're going to end today's session, and the next time I see you will be I'll have some options for you that have been compiled to kind of see where you fit in at. Okay. Okay. All right. Thank you. You're welcome.